Hello everyone, welcome to this next video on classical mechanics. In this video we shall see uh, all about Hamiltonian. We have already studied what a Hamiltonian operator is, how we can derive the equations of motion in using these approaches. Well, in this video let us see what is the advantage and what is the significance of using this approach. So, first of all let us see what does this Hamiltonian operator defined using the equation uh, summation qj dot pj minus l right where j varies from 1 to n so this operator what does this signify so as we have uh, discussed this in the previous video that uh, in some cases this h that denotes the total energy of the system so basically the dimension of this Hamiltonian H and the dimensions of Lagrangian operator L, right? They are same as that of dimensions of energy. So this is one point to note. Another point is that this H represents total energy when our system is conservative, one condition. That means the potential does not depend upon the generalized velocities Q dot right so please note that what is conservative system where the potential energy does not depend upon the generalized velocity so this uh, when you take the partial derivative of this potential so potential basically is a function of qj only so that would come out to be zero so for conservative system we have this thing that uh, hamiltonian represents the total energy of the system moreover when we apply the coordinate transformation that transformation is time independent that means this quantity is equivalent to 2t so what does this represent so our uh, hamiltonian equation was summation over j pj qj minus l so basically when our coordinate transformation is time independent so this quantity becomes equivalent to two times of that of kinetic energy so this is 2t and what is l l we know it is t minus v so the difference of kinetic energy and the potential energy so let us substitute this over here so from here we get uh, that h represents the total energy of the system that means the sum of kinetic energy and the potential energy Provided we have the conditions that the system is conservative and the coordinate transformation is time independent. In another case, this h represents the constant of motion. This quantity h is equal to summation varying over j, pj, qj dot minus l that was constant. And it was constant when we have this condition that the coordinate transformation, they, uh, these equations involve time explicitly right so this is the condition for h to be constant of motion but usually when we are de uh, solving the real life systems in that the hamiltonian uh, where bo which is both the constant of motion as well as the total energy is required right and we are looking for those system for which these uh, two conditions they are uh, true right so this is one thing. Another thing is that Hamiltonian do not require the individual calculation of force components as we saw in the Lagrangian. So the uh, Hamiltonian approach goes well with that of Lagrangian approach. So basically we are building on to uh, Hamiltonian approach using the Lagrangian upon, uh, uh, approach, right? Where we have eliminated the use of all forces and vector quantities. So here this is also a scalar quantity just like that of Lagrangian but uh, the thing that differentiates it from Lagrangian is that this Hamiltonian being a scalar it provides a method which could determine determine the total energy of the system although in some few particular cases we are saying this to be this thing to be true but it provides us or gives us a method to calculate to calculate this total energy of the system so in the last video we uh, i have told you that uh, calculating the equations of motion using the hamilton's equations 
canonical equations or from the lagrangian equations they are quite a lengthier process as compared to that of calculating them from newton's equation so why do we do so when we have simpler methods to uh, calculate these equations of motion for the simpler cases this is why because for the simpler cases what we have uh, we can learn such approaches some uh, pr uh, processes how they are working and how we can solve uh, different problems into um, using these approaches right so once we learn the technique of solving these uh, approaches we can do more abstract kind of thing right for example the first reason that i have stated over here is that this hamilton's method that gives the starting point for many other formulations the abstract formulations of mechanics why because here we have a freedom to choose whatever coordinates and the momenta that are required to completely describe the system uh, so basically we can talk about abstract things which are not based just upon just upon the displacements and the simple uh, velocities that we talk about we can have more other things also so this approach uh based upon coordinates and momenta where we are keeping these two things on equal footing so it forms a base for other abstract formulations the next reason is that in the study of energy changes in atoms and molecules there the forces cannot be directly calculated moreover the force of constraints they become meaningless when we talk about such small atoms and molecules so there the in order to study the energy changes we uh, take use of these approaches the hamiltonian approaches where this hamiltonian uh, the numerical value of this hamiltonian represents the energy of the system uh, right so that is why we use this approach let us see third reason it provides a convenient basis consisting of the uh, generalized coordinates and momenta the corresponding momenta for the development of other um, detailed subjects like quantum mechanics and statistical mechanics right moreover using this technique although nothing new has been added to the existing mechanics but another approach to handle such systems has been developed in this subject moreover as we have talked about atoms and molecules for microscopic systems this hamiltonian dynamics enjoys wide application so it has a huge application when you wanted to see some good applications of uh, either from this quantum side in uh, atoms or molecules or from the statistical mechanics there you can formulate abstractly different problems and solve them so there this technique of lagrangian and hamiltonian comes out to be really handy so i hope i convinced you for using this hamiltonian approach well that is it for this video i'll see you in the next video